Welcome Valpo fans to another edition of Valpo Basketball Weekly brought to you by Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. I'm Aaron Levitt. Joining me today, the head coach of the Valpo women's basketball team, Mary Evans. Coach Evans, thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me, Aaron. Um, before we get into specifics of the last couple games, I just want a more general thought from you. Obviously, last week, an emotional week between the two games and, you know, been a tough stretch for you guys. Just what was your emotion like Saturday at the end of the game, seeing the team get rewarded for their hard work over the last couple of months coming out with the win over Missouri State? Yeah, I was really I, – mainly I was just excited for them. I mean, they, they have continued to work and fight and show up every day, um, and they've just got a very workmanlike attitude. And so to see them finally kind of get over that hump and get a, a big win, right, for the program, the first one over Missouri State, but just a win after all the hard work and the fight that they put through during that stretch where we weren't winning winning games. And I was, you know, pretty emotional, but it was mainly just emotions of of, of proudness and, and happiness for them and what they were able to accomplish by, you know, staying the course and sticking together. We'll touch more on Missouri State in a minute, but going back to last Wednesday against UIC, obviously the result, not what we wanted. But looking back, I think one positive which came out of that and which we've seen kind of, kind of an improve over the course of the year, when your offense is struggling, it seems like we've gotten better at making sure – it doesn't snowball into big runs. We keep getting stops defensively to stay within striking distance. I think we saw that again in Wednesday's game. Yeah, I would agree. I think, you know, UIC, the, the style that they play, they're they're very post-oriented. Um, you know, we knew it was going to be a game that we were going to have to grind out. I don't think anyone expected us to go in there and put up a bunch of points. I don't think anyone scored a lot of points on them all year long. So we knew we were going to have to be sharp defensively, and I thought the – the young ladies did a great job of sticking to our game plan the majority of the night. And, you know, it came down to um, them making a play at the end of the game. But I thought they did a tremendous job putting them in a position to get the result we wanted in that game. And, you know, we left time on the clock and, and it was a two point game and, and UIC made a shot to win it at the buzzer. But I was really proud again of their effort in the second half of coming out and defending and putting themselves in the position. And then, you know, those are those are tough games to go through when you think you've gotten it done and then, you know, they put a dagger in your heart at the end of it. You gathered the team right there on the court immediately after the final horn. What was your message in that moment? Just to keep their head up, you know, that we got better. And that's kind of been our uh, the messaging and, and our mantra over the last month or so is as long as we're growing, that's okay. And this team has been growing every single game, no matter what the result is. And, and that's what our focus is on getting better every single opportunity that we have to practice and also to play games. And, and I think we're getting experience where players are starting to, to gain valuable, valuable game experience. And I think we're starting to see some people gain confidence and, and, and start to step up. And I'm excited to watch us continue to grow uh, moving forward for the remainder of the Valley schedule. Going on to Saturday's game against Missouri State, so much we could talk about and what you mentioned was the program's first ever win over the Lady Bears. But I think you have to start with Elise Pitts and her play, demolishing yeah. her previous career high with 24 points, added seven rebounds, brought a lot of energy. What did you see in the way she was playing and the confidence she was playing with on Saturday in that game? She was tremendous. I mean, she just looked really, really hungry for, for a win, and she was aggressive from the tip. I thought I was really, really excited to see her attack uh, the basket. I thought she kind of got herself going with some really good drives to the basket and strong finishes. Um, you know, she's a really, really gifted athlete, um, and she's extremely fast, and I think she's learning to kind of play at a tempo and a pace where she can still perform and, and make those lives but she attacked five and five is one of the fastest kids I've ever seen and she went right at her so I was excited to see that and then I thought she was tremendous rebounding the basketball especially defensively we knew it was going to be really important for our bigs to put bodies on their bigs and we had been talking to our guards all week about you need to get in there right if your player is not coming in there to rebound you got to get in it and, and pick up those loose balls because we're you know we were basically going um face guarding, hitting, hitting their post players, trying to keep them off the board. So I thought she kind of really stepped up there as a guard getting in and grabbing those loose balls and those long rebounds. Yeah, going on with the rebounding, this has been in terms of rebounding margin, your best rebounding team here. Um, but the effort on the glass Saturday, maybe the best I've seen in the last few years, Missouri State 
always one of the conference's top rebounding teams. They were coming off, yeah. I think it was like a plus 25 margin, their previous game against Southern Illinois, and you guys go in there and out-rebound them. Is it just a matter of toughness being able to do that against that kind of size? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, obviously all the credit goes to the players. They're the ones that are out there um, that have to put the bodies on people. But it is. I mean, rebounding is all about effort. It's about hitting people. It's about pursuing the basketball. It's about a want to and a desire to go get it. And I do think, you know, some of the changes we've made to our defensive scheme is helping put us in better positions to do that. We're keeping bigs on bigs. We're keeping littles on littles more, which is helping us box those big kids out. I think in the past with our switching, we've gotten, you know, some of our smalls switched onto their bigs and it puts us at a little bit of a disadvantage. And we usually can make up for that with turnover margin, but just kind of based on how the season's going, we felt like we needed to kind of make a change there so that we um, could address the rebounding. And I think the players bought into that change and now they're going out and executing that by boxing out and, and being really scrappy and really showing a real want to go get the basketball. And I think we've seen, and especially Saturday with the Missouri State posts and their their physicalness, their size, the defense our bigs played, you know, Maya Dunson there in the starting lineup and then Jada Johnson, Katie Byer coming off the bench, just did a tremendous job battling against some big physical post players from the Bears. Yeah, I would agree completely. You know, we're not the tallest team, but I think those three specifically you talked about have a real toughness uh, mentally and physically. And I think they went out there and showed that mental and physical toughness and, you know, did a great job taking good prime position in the post away from them and forced them into getting tougher catches off the block. And then, like I said, did a tremendous job keeping those kids off the offensive glass. And, you know, the one thing that really stuck out to me going into the game was that they were plus nine um, over any other team in our league offensive rebounding wise. So we knew that was a big part of their offense um, and how they score the basketball. We wanted to make sure we took that away. Well, you had a couple days to enjoy that win, and then it's right back to the Valley grind this weekend. Yeah. You go to you and I, to Drake, and then next week you get a Big Ten opponent in Wisconsin, and then you come home yeah. and play Illinois State and Bradley. It just it doesn't let up, does it? No, it doesn't. It, this is a fun time of the year. And, you know, players at this time of the year want to play basketball games more than practice. So we're going to enjoy it and we're going to go try to put them in, give them a good plan, put them in a good position to compete and and we'll see what happens. But this stretch, you know, going to Iowa is never easy. And you and I and Drake are both tremendous basketball teams and they're going to provide a lot of challenges that we'll have to try to figure out whether we can come up with some answers for. But we're excited to get back on the court today with practice and get to work and, and excited to get this little I don't know, seven games in like three weeks out of the way <laughs> and then get a break again. So it's going to be fun. Both those games this week at, and at UNI Thursday night at Drake Saturday afternoon can be seen live on the Valley on ESPN. Coach Evans, thanks for joining me today. Good luck in the coming weeks. All right, thanks, Aaron. This has been Valpo Basketball Weekly brought to you by Lakeshore and Joint Institute.